Okay, if you go to uh, Google and you Google Phil Goble, P-H-I-L-G-O-B-L-E, you will get to uh, a page, a bio page and a Phil Goble page where you can download this book free of charge. And it will help you to understand the book of Revelation. Because, uh, you know, in the same way that I might uh, take the life of Corrie Ted Boom and show how even though she went through the Holocaust, she was protected in the Holocaust and that she was miraculously delivered. Uh, and I could use that uh, as a, a, a way to tell a different story, which is how God will deliver you even in tribulation. And what uh, the book of Revelation does, instead of taking Corrie ten Boom and the Holocaust, it takes uh, the city of Rome, which is very uh, specifically identified in chapter 17, the city of seven hills. And then it takes uh, this beast, this Nero, and with him, using gematria, nun resh, ayin file nun, and kof samic resh, it shows you the total of 666, which is Nero Caesar transliterated into Hebrew, and then added up as Jewish gematria from the Hebrew equivalent of Neron Caesar in Greek. And uh, if you look at these uh, eight, now in chapter four of Revelation, you have the Avodas Kodesh worship in Shomayim, in heaven. You have the angels of creation, and you have the angels of the redeemed, which are pictured as 24 elders. And, and there's praise going on, and, and Hashem is being worshiped before the throne forever and ever. And that's how chapter 4 begins, uh, with the singers around the Kes Hashem, the throne. Uh, uh, and, and, and then when you get to chapter 5, you have the Megillah and, and the Say HaElohim, uh, who is able to open this scroll of destiny to see how things are going to proceed and what must soon happen, as it says in Daniel chapter 2. And you have uh, chapter uh, 6, the uh, hotamot, the, the hotam, the seal. This is the word in the plural. These seals come off. Now, we know that there's going to be judgment. And, of course, Gehinom is a place of eternal judgment. But even before that, you know, you talk about global warming. You talk about... Uh, uh, nature out of control. You talk about uh, fires, uh, mysterious fires everywhere and and all kinds of things happening uh, in the earth. Well, some people might say yes, but you know, Revelation is so fantastic. I mean, uh, come on, a third, a third of everything in the ocean being destroyed. Come on. Well, let me ask you, are you familiar with history? Do you know about that little flea on that black rat? Uh, something called the Black Death. Are you familiar with what happened in 1635, 36, 37, 38, long in there? I can't remember the exact dates. But in the 17th century, almost half of Europe in just two or three years wiped out. So many people dead, they couldn't even find uh, burial places in the cemetery for them. Whole families, villages becoming ghost towns. The Black Death, uh, almost half of Europe. So don't tell me that uh, these things are impossible that the book of Revelation speaks about. Uh, because... Uh, you get to chapter 7, you see Moshiach's Kehilah of the Hasidim, the, the 144,000. And then you see the, the Goyim, a multitude from Kol Haumim, from all the peoples. All this in chapter 7. Then you have the seventh seal in chapter 8, and you have the Shofarot. 
and each shofar that sounds, something, uh, some judgment occurs. And, and yet the people of God are being protected. But there are martyrs. Now, in North Korea, there wouldn't be any uh, question about this from the believers there, because that's what's happening every day. The, 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 you have the, the, the Malik and the Sefer Hakatan, the little uh, book in chapter 10. And then the martyrs saying, Ad Mosai, how, how much longer? And then in chapter 11, you have a, a scene of horror, a met mitzvah, corpses not properly attended to in Jerusalem. The Shanae Haidim, the two witnesses. And uh, all through this book, you have a recapitulation of things. And uh, the same thing seen from different angles. But in chapter 12, you have Haisha, the woman. It's a picture of redeemed eschatological Israel from Hava to the present. And, and, and the great dragon Nahash, the, the devil, the serpent, and his two henchmen, uh, the Hayah, the beast, the Hitler, and the Nabe Sheker, the, the, the Goebbels. Uh, in chapter 14, you get a, a, a picture of this again, the same thing. Uh, Moshiach's Kehilah of the Hasidim. And, uh, and, and when you get to uh, chapter uh, 15, the Malachim with the last exodus, Makot, the plagues, the plagues that God is going to pour out. And, uh, and more, more of these plagues uh, in chapter 16. And chapter 17, you have the Zona Hagadolah, the great city, the eschatological Rome, uh, and the Hayah, the beast, the anti-Moshiach uh, there, uh, and, and, and the great persecution of the believers. Don't give me your prosperity gospel, my friend. This book tells you, you better be ready to be martyred. Things are going to get bad, but God will protect his people. They will be able to get their witness out. Look, when he, had, when he wrote this, his brother had already been martyred. Uh, Rav Shaul and Akifa had already been martyred in Rome. Stephen had already been martyred. And now he himself was in tribulation on the island of Patmos. And he's seeing all of this. He's seeing what Nero has done and what the Nero Redivivus anti moshiach figure will do. Now you know what Hitler did. You know how he declared war against the uh, Jewish people, the chosen people. Uh, you saw uh, what happened. So you ought to be able to see that this is a uh, divinely inspired supernatural book. How could John see these things from uh, the first century? Uh, uh, and, and, and remember the fall of Berlin and remember uh, Hitler's body burning and also Goebbels' body burning and, and the picture we have here of, of their bodies burning forever and ever in a lake of fire and then the, the fall of Babylon chapter 18 and then uh, we see the fall of Berlin and we see the fall of these, of these two henchmen of the devil and, and, uh, and all of this is, is in this book. And why did God give us this book? So that we would read it and not just get blessed by hearing it read, but that we would understand that this is a, a martyr's vocation, being a believer. That when you went under the, the water, you were saying, look, I'm ready to, to let my old life be buried and gone and have a new life and rise in the newness of life and let my old life be buried with him. And if it means uh, martyrdom, so be it. 
uh, because the mikvah is a martyr's right, uh, and and all believers are, uh, at least in theory, martyrs. Finally, you get to chapter twenty-one, the Shemaim Hahadashim, the the new heavens and Haaretz Hahadashah, and the new earth, and the the Jerusalem that comes down from heaven. Uh, and uh, so what I'm uh, asking you to do is go to uh, Google, Google Phil Goble, and, and download this and look at the, the titles uh, for the chapters and try to read Revelation the way it really is. A Jewish book, a Jewish book Amen. written by a Jew, Amen. written to warn the Jewish people and also those who are grafted in. What is really involved in being a believer? Amen. It is not a prosperity gospel. It is not becoming some fat cat evangelist in Oklahoma with 25 jets. That is not what it's about, my friend. It's not about somebody like that in, in Texas. It's about uh, being in trouble for preaching the gospel. And as the powers of hell grow uh, strengthened, and uh, uh, greater as, as the end comes closer, then uh, the suffering will be more intensified, and yet God's protection will still be there. And God will allow you, he will help you to get through anything. Amen. He will take you through, you won't be alone. He will be with you. He says, I will never leave you or forsake you. And that's not just a little uh, promise to, uh, file away. That is something you need. Because uh, what did uh, Stephen say? Stephanos, what did he say? He said, I saw the Bar Enosh standing at the right hand of God. Not sitting, but standing. Why was he standing? Because he was getting ready to receive his martyr. Hallelujah. And he said, I will be with you always, even to the end. Hallelujah. And so that's the Bible that I believe in, friend. Amen. And that's why I'm a street preacher. Amen. That's why we're going to the Muslims. That's why we're going to the uh, Hasidim. That's why we're doing what we're doing. This is an end time ministry. And the world is already caving in with great persecution. And now uh, we're seeing this coming to America where a president who has made some kind of commitment. Maybe he's just a, uh, uh, maybe he's just a, a, a baby believer. But, but, uh, uh, but nevertheless, uh, there are wicked people picking up big stones with foul words coming out of their mouth, especially these Hollywood idiots who know nothing but how to uh, 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 memorize lines. It doesn't take many brains to be an actor, my friend. I was one. Anybody can memorize lines in front of a camera. And then you have this, these, these uh, writers and these uh, personalities. What are they doing? They're picking up big rocks with foul, evil speech, throwing it at this man. And I believe that subliminally it's because they don't like the spirit that's in him, the spirit that blesses Israel, the, the, the spirit that uh, wants to, to do right by the military and the spirit that is uh, uh, trying to move in a more godly way. Uh, oh, Father, I pray right now for the President of the United States that every assassin, every verbal assassin, every uh, uh, would-be assassin, every evil intent of the heart that comes from unsaved people, that, Lord, it would fall on the floor and do nothing, mm -hmm. that you would protect your servant. And I pray, Lord, for the believers of America, that they will sober up and get ready to face whatever is coming. And, oh, God, I pray for a revival, and I pray for the protection that's in the book of Revelation to go through the tribulation and will give you the praise. Amen. Amen.